Business Day publication for this opportunity. The Live Well Initiative, we've had a lot of experiences at the base of the pyramid. And um, for social investment, the investors themselves, they group themselves into different categories. You have the ones that call themselves the angel investors. You have the venture philanthropists, and so on and so forth. But the bottom line is that whatever nomenclature we want to use, the, the guy who has money wants his money to return to him, even if um, he is spending some of it in helping uh, society. He wants the money to come back, either in form of goodwill, or translating to helping to improve his organizational bottom line, which would, in the end, push up the profits. Now, those of us in the uh, social sector and in the um, civil society organizations, we realize this, and so we feel vulnerable, but we also see ourselves as a gap between the haves and the have-nots. And the, the haves um, end up being the um, investors, who want to be sure that their investment is uh, yielding good return. In those days, we had um, donor bodies um, and countries uh, just giving out donor funds without any uh, proper feedback, and then they constituted themselves into um, a, a group where they started holding meetings globally to decide on how best to give donor funds so that there'd be more transparency. But if we look at the local scene, or even let's look at West Africa, because we've worked in, um, not just only in Nigeria, we've worked in Ghana, Togo, and so on. You find out that the corporates want, they, usually what they want is they want some visibility, and then they want some return on their investment. So even in social, in embarking on social investments, corporate entities still want some return on that investment. And the message we have for them today is that corporate entities should look at the base of the pyramid because that's the real powerhouse in every society everywhere in the world. The base of the pyramid determines the bottom line of any organization or the bottom line of any country or the economy. So if the poorest people are very, very, very poor, then you cannot use the, the, the indices of the rich people in that nation to measure the wealth of that nation. Operates need to look at what the CSOs are doing with the poor people. At Live Well Initiative, we work a lot with the poor people. I always tell people that, see, I belong to the masses. I'm right down there at the base of the pyramid. There are two bases of the pyramid that we look at within the LWR. We look at the real base of the economic pyramid, and then we look at um, the base of the top of the pyramid. Now, there, there are people who are at the top of the pyramid, and uh, the middle class people are at the base of that second pyramid, which you could actually, I, we actually, I sent in a presentation, and I hope they will circulate this. You'll see the base of the top of the pyramid, and then the base of the pyramid. Now, the women are the most vulnerable population, but they are also the most influential. But you find out that the few organizations that do work with women, they work with women either because they have some um, special objective, uh, not necessarily because they have the best interest of those women at heart. And so they don't, they don't real, reach the real women that need to be reached. At Live Well Initiative, we work with the rural poor, we work with the urban poor, and we also work with the working poor, because there are also people who work and are engaged, yet they are poor. So you need to, in, in determining the social investment in this days, you need to look at the population that needs to be invested in. And the truth is that a corporate, when a corporate invests, in a social enterprise or in social work, you are helping to improve not just society but even your own lot and that of your generations yet unborn, like the last uh, contributor said. Because at the end of the day, when our kids grow up, they're going to grow up in the same society as the kids of these people that we have ignored and refused to help. 
and it's going to be a, a vicious cycle. So with the, with the vulnerable people, the rural poor in particular, there has to be a deliberate effort by corporates to invest in social uh, programs that will help the rural poor. That way, if we have um, improved social indices in the rural areas, the, the, the urban areas will be much better to live in. So social investors should please start targeting working with more NGOs and working with more populations at the base of the pyramid. Okay, I have a question to ask. Before you go, you know what's been happening in the economy. If we've been following the markets, we know that things have been down since um, like the last quarter last year. We'll try and cover, but it'll still be down again. So how will you convince a company to spend money on CSI? Knowing that right now, everybody's interested in making profits. And you know that when, you're, when you want to make profits and increase your margins, so that your investors will be happy, like um, most of companies are quoted. Even if your company is not quoted, at least you have your annual meeting, your annual general meeting, you have people that you report to. You do have to tell them that you're spending your money well. And if you want to make cuts, CSI is very easy to get caught up. One of the uh, key ways going forward is that we need to tie our CSR to actually our business objectives of the company. Um, we have, for instance, we talk about youth employment. Anyone, by the time you look at it, and the demographics which Bernard rightly mentioned, the 19.6 or 19 year uh, age bracket, median age. So we need to see that, look, if you can empower X number of these persons, this is going to be good for you. They will be able to get to buy your product. They will be able to get your product. Those are the kind of things that we need to look at. How our bottom, our business line, bottom line, how it's going to be affected by the sales. Are. We have to tighten. CSI yes, also has to demonstrate that the people you are adding value to can run by themselves. So you need to demonstrate to your organizations that this is an intervention that still leads to your commercial objective. My name is Bayo Rikini. I manage first Trust, and I'm also a pastor in the Dean in charge of CSR. Um, the first thing we need to clarify here is the distinction between CSR, philanthropy, and welfare. Because it is, in most cases, and in most solutions, are confused. And uh, yes, in as much as we don't want to legislate CSR, I mean, it won't work. But then you need to get people to really understand what is CSR and what is CSI. A lot of our so-called big companies, maybe a certain few that have uh, foundations like MTN and the rest of them, BAT uh, uh, and rest. Most organizations, big ones, you will describe they don't understand um, what is CS, CSI and CSR. I will advise the likes of Business Day to really bring together some of these organizations. I know. Um, uh, LBS does that once in a while, but I think we need to do more to really, because like uh, the other lady was asking, uh, when you are going, you're not doing very well, why should you, or how do you convince somebody to invest in CSI when it's not, you know, when it's not doing well? But it's much more than just a company doing well. Like uh, uh, the last week I said, I want to maybe rephrase it. You actually do yourself. A, a lot of favor by investing in the less people. So let's not just look at it as just corporate, even individuals. It, has, it will amaze you that in the village, I grew up in the village. In fact, my great grandfather owns the village with seven houses only. Okay, I mean, seven buildings, uh, mold houses, of course. It will amaze you that as little as 500 naira. And one thousand that can solve some of those problems. It's not just sitting in Lagos and thinking you are doing a lot of things. Let's begin to refocus our corporate social investments to the rural areas. And I used to tell people when we were growing up, yeah, when we came to Lagos and we were growing up, I said, if you begin to ride these big, big cars and you see this little, little one that you're not helping, they will really want to kill you and kill your children. So let's begin to think now out of the box. Not just the companies, even we as individuals, we can do a lot in terms of CSI. Thank you very much. Several years ago, this slide came to me. 
every young person in this country believes, or their parents believe that if they don't go to university and get the first degree, they will never make it in life. When I went to England in 1966 to study, to continue with my engineering program, having gone to the France of Science in 1964, I was convinced to go to insurance or, or, or accountancy. I am, by the grace of God, whether anybody likes it or not, a successful insurance practitioner. Yes, yes, yes. I went out to see the heights without going to the university first. So, what, what we are saying now is that we have set up a foundation called the Professional Excellence Foundation of Nigeria to take care of these young people, to go into the professional line and become professionally qualified in their chosen profession. And I have it authoritatively that there are severe shortage of professional manpower in this country. Graduates are there, several of them, looking for jobs they cannot get. What they need to get do is to become professionally qualified and, and assure everyone that does so that he or she will get job instantly on behalf of the employment market. The school certificate holders, five credits, English and math, young people, that's now one of the basic requirements now for professional studies. The corporate organizations, they really need to, you know, um, liaise with the NGOs because they are the one on ground. We work in rural areas. We know what these women want. And because we are the ones that talk to them, because it is wrong that you just go into a community and you just look around the community and you feel, oh, I think this community, they probably need water. And you give them water, and probably that is really not what they want. So the other question I'm asking now, where is the bridge between the personal gains or personal interests and then the real corporate social responsibility to the people that we need to have government, citizens, CSOs, and corporates together partnering in a structured form. And that would minimize this issue of personal interest. Because you will always find bad eggs. You will always find people who are not ethical in their dealing. However, what is important is that as corporates, you provide opportunities for CSOs to demonstrate that they can manage this project. Well, I, I believe that there should be transparency on both sides of the divide. The truth is that um, on the NGO side, the, many of the NGOs feel that uh, they're not being fairly treated. But the corporates do feel that uh, some of the NGOs are not quite transparent and um, they, they do not, they, the feedback reporting is very poor. So um, it's something that needs to be worked upon on both sides of the divide. On the side of the um, CSOs, they, they should put in place processes, um, SOPs, procedures, and processes so that they can attain uh, replicability and uh, scalability.